My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2019. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number seven. Day 7 and we are on page number 152. Make sure the book is in front of you. Let's turn to page 152. The very first problem that you see on the page number 41. Okay, And read it to yourself so you know exactly what's going on. Number 41 says... Number 41 says that we bought two bicycles. Cost of two bicycles. Cost of two bicycles was 250 and three hundred and seventy five dollars what happened next this is a merchant who bought two bicycle and he sold it sold these two sold sold these two bicycle sold these two bicycles at a profit at a at a total profit of 250. They further go on to tell us that he sold one of these bicycles, sold one of these bike for four hundred and fifty dollars. But do not they do not tell us which of the which of the two bikes he sold for four fifty. They just tell us they sold one of he sold one of these two bikes for four hundred fifty dollars. Question is very simple. The question simply is, which of the following, which of the following could be, which of the following could be the profit on the other bike? Which of the following could be the profit on the other bike? Let's find out, shall we? I'm going to change the marker because this thing is doesn't have much light left in it. All right. So there are only two possible scenarios: either he sold this one or that one for four hundred and fifty dollars. And because this three hundred seventy-five dollars is a higher price, I'm just going to assume for the time being that he sold that more expensive one, that one that he paid three hundred seventy-five dollars for. He turned around and sold that one for 450. If, it, if that thing doesn't work out, then we'll, we'll see you on this one. But there are two possible scenarios, and, one, and only one of those two scenarios, uh, the, the result would match with one of the answer choices. You understand? So let's assume that he sold this one for 450. If he sold for 450, he sold for 450. His cost was 375, which means he made a profit of 125 dollars, or rather, is it 125 dollars? No, it's not 125 dollars. Is seventy five dollars five twelve minus uh, fourteen minus seven is seven is seventy five dollars. In other words, he made a profit of seventy five dollars. Let's call it bike two and bike one. He made a profit of seventy five dollars on bike two. We also know that he made a total profit of two hundred and fifty dollars. That implies that the profit from bike one, profit from bike one. Profit from the bike one has to equal the total profit minus the profit from two, which we just found to be seventy-five. It's seventy-five dollars is the profit we are, because we are assuming that this is the one that, that he sold bike number two for four fifty. If it doesn't work out, we'll have to do this one. Do you understand? So if he made a profit of seventy-five dollars on the second bike. His total profit, we were told, was $250, which means that for this to hold, he must have made a profit of $175 on the, on the first bike. And if one of the answer choices matches $175, then we are done. And if it doesn't, then we have to do the second scenario. And lucky for us, it matches. The answer is E. Answer choice is E. And if you were to work out the second scenario on your own, I'm not going to do it here, but if you were to work it out on your own, you will see the, none of the answer choices will match. We can actually very quickly do it if you like it. We can very quickly do it. Watch. If we, if we assume, we assume that uh, he sold it for 450. Okay, very quickly. Assume, assume that he sold it for 450. This bike, this bike 
not that bike, bike one. If he sold bike one for 450, which means he made a profit of $200. He made a profit of $200 on this bike, bike one. If that were to be true, if he made a profit of $200 on bike one, then because of the fact that his total profit is only 250, which means that bike two, he must have made only profit of only $50. And 50 is not one of the answer choices. 50 is not one of the answer choices. So if you were to go that route, then you would have to do the second scenario. That's all. A lot of the time, a lot of the time there is not much in these problems. You just have to reason it out calmly, that's all. Now this one I want to make sure. A, B, C, and D. I want to make sure that I do not put any more information than what is given here on the blackboard to start out with. 120 degrees we are told, and we are also told that it is not drawn to scale. Not drawn to scale. Now I know we are here for GMAT, but, but for those of you who are familiar with GRE, in GRE that is the default. In GRE that is the default. Pictures, all the pictures that you get in the GRE, they are all not drawn to scale. That is the default. And in that case, in the GRE, there will be a notation under the picture which will tell you it's drawn to scale. If, that, if it doesn't say it's drawn to scale, then the assumption is that all the pictures in the GRE are not drawn to scale. On the, on the, on the GMAT, all the pictures are drawn to scale unless they tell you otherwise by telling you a notation that it's not drawn to scale. So in that sense, in that sense, GMAT is like SAT. In the SAT also, pictures that they give you, they are all drawn to scale, unless it indicates that it's not. Let's begin this story, enough of the talk. What else do we know? We know that A to C is 2. A to C is equal to 2. A to C is 2. We, also, we are also told that B to D is equal to D to C. B to D is equal to B to C, D to C, which is 1. Let's see what that is, B to D. B to D is equal to D to C. D to C, really? All right. Okay, okay. So now we're going to begin the story, okay? As a matter of fact, I have already started the story. So follow the steps, and that's all it is, because I, if I were to write down in excruciating details the steps that we're doing, it would just take forever. Just follow me. The beauty of the video is that you can always rewind it and watch it again, the step one by one. So first step was this. We are told, so let's start the story. A to C is 2. A to C is 2. We will make a note of it. Then we are told that B to D, B to D is equal to D to C. D to C, which is hence the marks. They go on to tell us that this is, they, they both equal 1. So here we go. They both equal 1. This is 1 and this is 1. But if this, if D to C is 1, again I'm not going to write down the logic, you just have to follow it. If D to C is 1 and A to C is 2, then that also means that A to D must also be 1, which means that all of these three sides are equal. This side is equal to that side, equal to that side. So far so good? Hold on, let's begin then. Let's start. Okay? If A to D, if A to D is equal to A to D, if, if A to D, which it is, if A to D is equal to B to D, then triangle A, B, D, triangle A, B, D is isosceles. I just said I'm not going to write it, so I'm going to stop writing it. If this side A to D is equal to B to D, then A, B, D is isosceles. If it's isosceles, that means angle A must equal angle B. That's what isosceles triangle means. Since this angle is 120, since this angle is 120, we only have 60 left over because some of the three angles has to be 180. Since there is only 60 left over and angle B is equal to angle A because A, B, D is isosceles, which means each one of these must be 30. So far so good. Let's carry on. This is 120. If this is one, we never put down what they are asking actually. We started the story but we never, A, B, D, triangle A, B, D is what we are trying to figure out. A, B, D, A, B, oh we just figured it out. It can't possibly be that simple. That's it, we are done. The answer is C. We just figured it out. A, B, D is 30. Answer is C. One more time. We are told that A to C is equal to 2. We are told that B, D 
BD, BD equals DC, which is this thing, and they are both equal 1. If they are both equal 1, then since A to C is 2, A to D must also equal 1, which means A to D is equal to B to D, which means ABD is an isosceles triangle, in which one of the angles is 120. If one of the angles is 120, then the sum of the other two has to be 60, and they are both equal to each other, which means they are both 30. There you go. Let's move on to 43. That turned out to be much simpler than I expected it to be. In 43 we are told that k square is equal to m square. k square is equal to m square. Let's make a note here. k square is equal to m square. And the question simply is, which of the following, which of the following must be true? That word there is very important, must be true, because many of these following statements that they give you, in some cases, might be true, may be true in some cases, but we are looking for something that must be true. In other words, we are looking for a statement that has to be true at all times, without exception. For example, statement 1 here tells us that k equals m. Now, in some scenario, that might be true. Why? Because we are told that k squared is equal to m squared. Now this is where we have to pay attention. This is where we have to pay attention. If k square, if k squared is, is equal to m squared, for example, if you were to plug in numbers here, we, k could be positive 2 or negative 2. In both cases, k squared would be 4. Square of 2 is 4, and square of negative 2 is also 4. Which means this quantity is 4 which is equal to m squared, which means m can also be positive 2 or negative 2. Just plug in some numbers. The reason why a lot of people are going to get this question wrong is because this is the part that they miss. When k squared equals m squared, that does not necessarily mean that k is equal to m. There are four possible scenarios, four possible scenarios. And I'm going to tell you a scenario. This is scenario one. Either k is positive and m is positive, they are both positive, or they are both negative, or one is positive, other one is negative, like this. In other words, negative 2 squared would equal 2 squared. Oh, I meant to put the 2 after the plus sign. You see, these two quantities are equal. So is this quantity, positive 2 squared is equal to negative 2 squared. You see? And so is the other quantity. Negative 2 squared, of course, would equal negative 2 squared. And positive 2 of squared also equal positive 2 squared. We do not know... All we know is that the squared of the two quantities are equal, but that leaves us with four scenarios. It does not make it clear, actually, what they are individually. Either, either they are both positive, both negative, or, or are they are on the opposite sign. So here, for example, this is something that may be true, or that may not be. Maybe, maybe k is positive 2 and, and m is negative 2, in which case k does, is not necessarily equal to m. k does not need to be which of the following must be true, this is not something that must be true. It may be true, but it's not necessarily so. It may be true, but not necessarily true. Not necessarily so. Answer choice B says, K is equal to negative M. Well, again, we do not know. Maybe, maybe, K, maybe K is equal to negative 2. Maybe K equals negative 2. And maybe M equals negative 2 as well. If they're both of the same sign, if they are both of the same sign, then this thing is not equal to each other. Because negative of negative 2 will become positive 2, and positive 2, of course, does not equal to negative 2. So again, statement B is something that may, may, may or may not be true. It is not something that has to be true. Statement C says that K is equal to absolute value of M. K is equal to absolute value of M. Well, M, since we are taking absolute value of M here, since we are taking the absolute value of m, it really doesn't matter whether m is positive or negative, whether it's positive or negative, absolute value of positive 2 and absolute value of negative 2, they are both 2, but that doesn't mean that k is 2, maybe k is negative 2. So if k happens to be negative, if k happens to be negative, then this scenario will not hold. This scenario will not hold if k happens to be negative. Let's look at answer choice D. Answer choice D says that, answer choice D says just the opposite. Answer choice D says K is equal to negative of absolute M. Negative of absolute M. Because 
because we're taking absolute value of m, again, it does not matter whether m is positive 2 or negative 2, because it's the absolute value. But the point here is that, since there is a negative in front of the absolute sign, this quantity negative of absolute m will always be negative, because there is a negative sign in front of it. But what if, what if k happens to be positive? Then they are not equal. It is not something that is necessarily true. It may be true, it may not. There is only one statement that has to be true all the time, and that statement is the very last statement that they give us, which is answer choice E, which is simply the absolute value of K has to equal the absolute value of M. Because in that case, it doesn't matter whether K is positive or negative, whether M is positive or negative, whether, po whether K is positive 2 or negative 2, absolute value of K in both cases will be 2, and it doesn't matter whether M is positive 2 or negative 2, absolute value of M will also equal 2. This statement will always be true. Regardless of which of these four scenarios we run into, I'm going to put down the four scenarios one more time. The four scenarios are, maybe if k squared is equal to m squared, then in that case, maybe they are both positive, or they are both negative, or of the opposite sign. Doesn't matter which of these four scenarios is there, when you take the absolute value of both k and m, absolute value means exactly what it says. They are both become positive and therefore these two quantities will always be equal to each other. That statement is something that has to be true all the time. It is something that must be true. Let's go to 44. In 44, we have in 44, we have four people. Makato, which we're going to use N to represent him, this person, Nishi, which we're going to use letter N to represent, and finally, do not ask me why they give you names such as these, because they want to be inclusive, and that's the only reason. Let's, let, let's use letter Z to represent Ozuro. We, we can't use letter O because it's going to confuse us with, with, the, with the zero. Okay, so these three people we were told, these three people were paid, were paid a total of, a total of $780. They did some, they did some job together, they, they worked together uh, and they finished doing some job and the homeowner, after the job was finished, the, uh, the homeowner paid these people $780. Now here's the situation. We are told that M worked, we are told that M worked, 15 hours on the job. N worked 20 hours on the job. And Z worked 30 hours on the job. 30 hours on the job. Because they work because they work different hours, different number of hours, they cannot divide this amount evenly into three equal parts. That wouldn't be fair. Because this Z, this guy worked twice as much as the first guy did. And this guy only worked 20 hours, so it wouldn't be fair to divide it evenly. What is the question asking? Number 44, whose salary are we looking for? How much this this guy made? Question is, how much should we pay this guy? M guy. And we can't, we can't pay him simply one-third of the amount because he did not work one-third of the work. He did not do one-third of the work. So let's find out how many total hours they work. What we're going to do is we're going to figure out how many total hours they work. We're going to divide the total hours by the amount of money the amount of money they got, or rather the other way around, and figure out the hourly wage. And the total hour they work is five, is sixty-five hours. So let's figure out the hourly wage. Shall we? Shall we? Hourly wage would have to equal seven hundred eighty dollars that they made divided by sixty-five hours. There you go. And the unit made it very clear that what we're going to get is dollars per hour, dollars per hour. 780 divided by 65. I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to rewrite this thing, and we don't need the unit. We know it's hourly wage. It says right there. I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to erase this part so it doesn't confuse us. So essentially, 780, 780, which we're going to write it as, as 78 times 10. Always, when you're dealing with large numbers, if you have to divide 48,000 by some other number, don't write 48,000 as 48,000. Write it down as 48 times 1,000. Do you understand? It makes it easier. So that's 780 divided by 65. Let's begin, shall we? 
Let's divide top and bottom by let's divide top and bottom by five. Ten is the multiple of five. There are two fives in, in ten. How many fives does sixty-five have? But don't look at me. What the hell do I know? Let's find out, shall we? How many how many five does six have? Six has one five. Six has one five. After we take away 5 from the 6, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? 1 goes and joins the 5 and becomes a 15. And 15 has 3 5s. In other words, 13 times 5, 13 5s are 65. Which makes perfect sense that 13 5 should be 65 because we know 10 5s are 50 and other 3 5s would be 15. And 50 plus 15 is 65. Hence, if you had 13 5s, that should be 65. Now the problem is, now the problem is 13 is a prime number. If 13 is a prime number, there is not much we can do here in terms of reducing it. We simply have to figure out how many 13 and 78. So let's figure it out here, shall, shall we? We know, we know that 1030, 1030s are 130. This is, this is how one is speak, okay? This is how one is speak. 1013s are 130. In other words, if you were to multiply 13 by 10, we'll get 130. If 1013s are 130, 513s, 5 thirteens must be 65. 65 must represent how many thirteens? 5 thirteens. But we need to go to 78, which means other other 13. If you take another 13, we'll get 78 and that represents 6 thirteens. In other words, we can divide top and bottom by 13 and we get 6. 6 times 2 is $12 per hour. And that's it. Hourly rate is $12. That guy worked, M worked 15 hours. So how much money should M get? Well, you should get 15 times 12. M should get, let's erase all of this thing, we don't need it. Since M, since M worked 15 hours, and since the hourly wage is $12 per hour, $12, he worked 15 hours, and he's get $12 per hour, hours are going to cancel out, and we're going to left with the dollar amount, and 12 times 15, 12 times 15. I know 10 12s are 120, 10 12s are 120, and 5 12s are 60. 10 12s, if you multiply 10 by 12, we get 120, and if you multiply 5 by 12, we get 60. So it must be $180. He, he, he has to get paid $180. And that will be answer choice, we are on 44. That's answer choice D. Let's move on to 45. In 45, we are told that Mary walked P to Q to R. Right here is the triangle. P to Q to R. We are told that it's a right angle triangle, which is a very important bit of information because without that, we cannot solve this problem. We have to know that it's a right angle triangle. P, Q to R. And we have to know that it's a right angle triangle, and we'll figure out, we'll, we'll know the significance of it in about a second. We also told that P to Q is 8 miles and Q to R is 6 miles. So she walked, she walked from P to Q to R. And Ted, Ted walked directly from P, P to Q, P to R. Question simply is, by what percentage, by what percentage did the distance traveled by Mary exceeds the distance traveled by Ted? By what percentage does it exceed? Not by how much, but by what percentage? We have to figure out P to R. We have two choices. Because it's a right angle triangle, we can apply the Pythagorean theorem and, you can, and we can do that. 8 squared plus 6 squared equal to x squared. We can do all of that mumbo jumbo. And I hope that you would not do all of that mumbo jumbo. I hope that you're quick enough to realize that it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle incognito. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle incognito. As you can see, 8 is simply 2 times 4. And 6 is simply 2 times 3. And therefore, this missing side would have to be 2 times 5. The missing side is 5. So Ted traveled 
Ted traveled 10 miles and Mary traveled 8 plus 6 8 plus 6 14 miles and the question is by what percentage did the distance by what percentage did the distance traveled by Mary distance travel of Mary is 14 by what percentage did the distance traveled by Mary which is 14 exceeds the distance traveled by Ted Ted traveled 10 miles so by what percentage is 14 greater than 10 14 is simply 4 more than 10 and 4 happens to be what percentage of 10 obviously 40 percent Four, because I feel silly even writing it, I'm not going to write it. The difference is 4, and 4 happens to be 4% of TED, which means Mary traveled 40% more distance than did TED. Mary traveled 40% more distance than did TED, which is what the question is asking. By what percentage did the distance traveled by Mary exceeds the distance traveled by TED? And the answer is the distance traveled by Mary exceeds by 40% the distance that was traveled by TED. Next one, number 46, number 46, if you are interested in working with me, if you would like to hire me as your tutor to help you get the better score on, a G, uh, on GMAT, there is the information here, my phone number 1-800-808-PREP, PR, my, my email address prepsat at aol.com, you can send me an email, go to my website, you can send or email address right there, the phone number get hold of me and I'll be more than happy to do whatever it is that I can do to help you get a better score. Now back to our program. I had this uncontrollable urge to plug. I don't know why. Because most of the time I forget. I finish the whole video and I forget. So this was number 46. X is a positive integer we are told. You have to keep that in mind. X quantity has to be a whole number and not only it's a whole number but it has to be positive. And we are told that 4x minus 3 has to equal y. Question is which of the following which of the following cannot be the value of y. 1, 7, 13, 61, 253. There are five choices there. Out of those five, four of them are possible for the value for y to take as a value. Only one is such, a, such that y cannot take one of these five values. And our job is to figure out which one of these cannot be the value of y. Given the fact, given the fact that x is a whole number and it's positive. So let's begin the show. Let's begin the show. Let's pretend that, let's pretend that x is 1. That seems like a logical place because it has to be positive, it has to be an integer. The first positive integer is 1. So let's begin our show with 1. If x happens to be 1, we end up with 4 is to 1 minus 3, 4 is to 1 is just 1, 1 minus 3 is 1, which means, and that is your y, which means it is possible, it is possible for y to be 1 when x is 1. It's answer choice, it's not a. Because our job is to figure out which of the following cannot be the value of y. Value of y can be 1 when x is 1. Let's make it x equal to 2. If x is equal to 2, 4 is to 2 minus 3, 4 is to 2 is 16. 16 minus 3 would be 13 which means it is also possible for x to be 13. I need to move this one. I have the earth to move this one. Otherwise it's not going to line up with the unit digit. Which means y can also be 13. Hmm. We skip that one. I wonder what the answer is going to be. Let's move on, shall we? Let's pretend that x is equal to 3. If x is equal to 3, then we'll have 4 is to 3 minus 3. 4 is to 3 is 4 times 4 times 4 16 times 4 is 64, 64 minus 3 is 61, which means that when x is equal to 3, y is going to be 61. Hmm, y can, uh, y can be 61. Let's do one last one. When x is equal to 4, it is 4 is to 4 minus 3, and we just found out that 4 is to 3 was 64. If 4 is to 3 is 64, 4 is to 4 is going to be 64 times 4, 64 times 4, 
4 for the 16 is 256 16 carry carry 1 and 6 for the 24 plus 1 is 25 is 200, 256 it is 256 256 minus 3 is equal to 253 hmm. oh wow what do you know what do you know the answer is B it's just as well because I don't think I could bear the suspense any longer the suspense was killing me as to what the answer was going to be I could break the suspense no longer I could break the suspense no longer the next word I'm going to put the next word I'm going to that I just put here I know it's a very simple word particularly for a native speaker if you actually happen to be incognito is a very straightforward word but let's learn both of these words so let's start with broke I wonder which day in our vocabulary lessons we learned the word broke it was day number four day four just type in, in the search box just type in GMAT vocabulary words day four video will pop right up watch the video and learn the word broke the next word was incognito as I said it's a straightforward word which simply means to be in disguise and what I said is that the 345 triangle that we just came across it was a 345 triangle even though the sides were 8 and eight and 6 I think they were yes of course 3, 4 uh, it doesn't look like 345 but it was it was 345 triangle incognito 345 triangles whenever they appear on the exam in most cases in the more vast majority of the cases the, a 345 triangle does not actually appear as a 345 triangle it always almost appears incognito in disguise if it takes too long then, then we'll move on but I do know that we learned it oh there you go day number 42 just type in vocabulary words GMAT vocabulary words day 42 and learn this word as well Brook means to be able to hand to be to be able to handle to be able to tolerate endure stomach do you understand the suspense was absolutely killing me I could brook the suspense no, no, no longer I could tolerate the suspense no longer it was killing me let's do the last one number 47 number 47 enough of the enough of the silly talk number 47 says 1 minus 1.25 times m equals 1 and the question simply was the value of n let's find out shall we 1 minus 1.25 would simply be negative 0.25 times n equals 1 let's put down this negative 0.25 in, in fractions we make a life easier 0.25 is 1 quarter so negative 1 quarter of n equals 1 we're not interested in we're not interested in knowing how much is negative or 1 quarter of n is we want to find out how much is n we need to get rid of this 4 and we need to get rid of this negative so let's multiply both sides of this both sides of the equation by negative 4 if we multiply both sides of the equation by negative 4 this negative this negative and this negative will become positive so we'll end up with positive n because this 4 is cancelled out with this 4 and that's what we want n equals negative 4 n would equal, equal, have to equal negative 4 and the answer is c oh boy that was the end of that page I'll see you tomorrow when we meet for the following page and on and on and on. Amen. Bye now.